Ecclesiastes 6-7 All the labor of a man is for his mouth, and yet his appetite is not filled. You know, every work we can do in this life is to have a point. But if God isn't in our life, then that point isn't going to fill what we need. Because we need His Spirit to dwell in us to complete us. No matter what we feel in that, whether it's food or money or pleasure, it isn't going to fulfill us. Because there's a spot in us that's meant to be His Spirit. And that's where we'll find happiness when we have Him. Okay. 2 Corinthians 3, 9 through 18. For if, minister, if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. He's talking about the law condemns us. We're condemned by the law. But we're made righteous by the glory of Christ. Our condemnation is by our flesh. Our righteousness is in His Spirit dwelling in us because of our, in the grace we receive based on the blood of Christ. And that's how we achieve glory, by Him. It isn't by anything we can do. It's by what He did for us. While we're still sinners, we're received into glory because of Him. Verse 10, For even that which was made glorious, had no glory in this respect, by reason of glory that excels. That which was made glorious. Christ was made glorious. Yeah. But it, on the cross, he had no, he wasn't seen as glorious. For us, it is, because it's how we are received. But for to the world, he had no respect on that cross. He had no love shown. He was rejected on that cross. By him we receive glory. By him being deserved glory being in a spot where he received none. We are able to receive glory when we deserve none. Verse 11 For if we that which is done away was glorious much more that which is received remains is glorious. Our lives are to bring glory to the Lord. Prior to us coming to Him, we didn't bring much glory to the Lord. But it's referring more to the old tradition. If us doing something for us coming to the Lord and following the law, brought glory to God, then how much more, which it doesn't, but how much more does us following the one, the one who, because we may follow the law, but then we fall short and fall out of the glory, is why we don't live by the law, but we live by the one who fulfilled the law of Christ, and this allows us to stay in His glory, because it's by Him we receive glory, not by us doing things and keeping things. Seeing them that we have such hope, we use such plainness of speech, boldness of speech. We have a hope. Our hope is found in Christ. We have hope of betterness because of Him in us. And this should come out in the way we talk. This should come out in excitement and passion for Him. But oftentimes it don't. But it should. Verse 13. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of what is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remains the same veil, untaken away 
in the reading of the Old Testament, which the veil is done away in Christ. So there is a veil in the temple to separate God from man. Well, when Christ died, that veil was ripped because Christ made path for us to go straight to God. We didn't have a priest anymore, need for a priest, because Christ died, became the sacrifice. So there was no longer a need for a priest to offer that sacrifice because we can freely go to Christ and receive God. So the, ve- the cross eliminated the veil because it's no longer a veil separating us because path to God is by the cross which Christ died. But people still want to put that veil up, separate them from God when Christ made that way us to go. The only thing that separates us from God is our sin, but if we give it to Christ, it's forgiven on the cross, and we can go straight to God. But oftentimes, we still put our sin in the path from God, allow it to be a burden when God's already forgiven us for it. And it doesn't hold us against it, but we do hold ourselves against it when God's already forgiven us. But Verse 15, but even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is falling in their heart. So they're concealing their heart from being changed. This is the reason why they haven't come to Christ, because their heart is hidden, and God ain't able to move. They don't allow God to move it, because there's a block, and the veil there. Verse 16, nevertheless, when we be, when he shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Personal communication. When we allow him into our heart, when we allow that veil to go away and into our heart, we got personal communication with the Lord. The Lord will move our heart to guide us to where he wants us to be. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. We are made free by the Spirit of the Lord. It isn't to hold us bondage. It's to lead us in the ways of righteousness, which are better for us. Which are better. It isn't. We ain't bound to sin. We're set free from it by the Spirit. Verse 18. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from the glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You know, we're changed to look more like the Lord. We're supposed to resemble the Lord more. We're supposed to be Christ-like. Resemble the Lord more for the world. This is how we're to live. For some people, we're going to be the closest thing to Christ that they'll ever see outside their judgment. And we should be the best we can be. We represent Christ 